Today I want to talk about injuries to the chest. In patients who have been assaulted, oftentimes people who have injuries to the chest such as stab wounds or gunshots are not aware that they have those injuries. It might be more surprising to you to learn that all the way through the trauma center, it's not an uncommon mistake to fail to expose a patient's chest and to discover what could be referred to as a sucking chest wound. In our patient here today, we're going to talk a little bit about wounds to the chest and treatment for injuries that potentially could be life-threatening because they damage the integrity of the lung itself. First step in looking at any patient is to thoroughly expose the chest. What we'll do with our patient here is remove his shirt. We'll look at the back of the patient. Make sure that the chest wall is intact, that there's no injuries to the back, the posterior surface. And then we'll look at the front of the chest. We notice that there appears to be a wound to the side of the chest, which could potentially be a sucking chest wound or something that is causing a pneumothorax in the patient. Signs and symptoms of that in a patient could be difficulty breathing, crepitus or a rice crispy feeling to the chest wall, diminished breath sounds on that side of the chest where the injury occurs, or there could be no symptoms in a patient, which is why many people are often unaware that they've been shot or stabbed. Any injury that goes through the chest wall has to be considered an open chest wound and treated with an occlusive dressing. The conventional way that we've learned to do that is to use a gauze such as Xeroform gauze or Vaseline gauze to seal the wound on the chest. I'll demonstrate how that should be done and then I'll talk a little bit about patients who have multiple injuries to the chest wall where it may not be practical or you may not have the time to apply Vaseline gauze to each one of the wounds. In this patient, we'll apply some body substance isolation precautions. Then we'll take the Vaseline gauze dressing open the dressing and we're going to actually use the container of the dressing as part of the occlusive package itself. We'll leave the dressing on the foil wrapper, remove the back part of it, and then apply the dressing over the wound itself. What we next need to do is to seal three sides of the dressing with tape. In all patients who you apply an occlusive dressing to the chest, you need to be sure that the dressing is larger than the size of the wound on the chest so that the dressing doesn't get sucked into the wound itself on the patient. What we're doing now is sealing three sides of the dressing with tape. The fourth side of the dressing is left open so that we can relieve pressure that builds up inside the chest wall. There are two ways to do that. If the patient's conscious and breathing and having increased difficulty breathing, you may ask the patient to cough. And as they cough, you would lift up one side of the dressing and air would release from underneath the dressing with the patient's cough. If the patient is not conscious or not able to cough, you could use a bag valve mask and give a breath to the patient. As you squeeze the bag, you'd lift the dressing up and the patient would, in effect, have a cough that releases air from the dressing. Next, I want to talk about a patient who has multiple injuries to the chest where you may not have time to apply dressings to each one of the wounds. Whether you're an ALS provider or BLS provider, a piece of equipment that would be useful to seal multiple wounds on the chest are ECG electrodes. They're round dressing, they have an occlusive center to them, and are very convenient for multiple gunshot or multiple small stab wounds to the chest wall. If you have a patient with injuries like that, you would put in an ECG electrode over each one of the injuries to the chest wall. You can do this very quickly it's very efficient and it's an easy way to seal injuries that occur all over the chest wall itself. One thing that you might want to do 
so that the hospital is not confused between an occlusive dressing and an ECG electrode is to label each one of the ECG electrodes to indicate that there's a wound under it. So if we were to write on this one, gunshot wound, stab wound, gunshot wound, that would give some indication that these are not ECG electrodes, but occlusive dressings. I'm Mike McAvoy. Thanks for watching.